the first two passages of the Tao Te Ching spoke of Tao, the universal flow that unites every being and the surrounding world. It shows how human mind creates an illusion of duality that makes us believe in the existence of separated opposites, such as light and shadow, life and death, good and bad. But everything, from people to oceans, from stars to atoms, from the elements of nature to emotions, is a single organic process, one harmonious flow. One might say that behind everything lies a single eye, the eye of the universe. What people usually mean by the word I is the ego. Most people perceive themselves as something isolated from the rest of the world and other creatures. A lonely and abundant I forced to survive in the dangerous and foreign world. But ego is a fiction in a person's head. Due to the dualistic nature of language, the mind has divided the whole into poor me that is trapped into the body and everything else outside it. But in reality, there is no such division. All beings are connected and share one life, one I, one universe. Individuality is like leaves on a tree. Each leaf has its own unique experience yet they all part of the same plant. Those who observe oneness with the universe are called sages or masters. The state of consciousness of a master is similar to that of a dancer who completely forgets themselves in the ecstasy of a dance. There is no ego, no I that is dancing. The being of the dancer dissolves in the dance, like a river dissolves into an ocean and becomes one with it. Just one continuous flow. Tao. Tao can be viewed as some kind of gravity, a force that pulls everything to itself. However, Tao is not a physical law. It encompasses all the laws of nature but is much more than that. The symbol of yin yang reflects Tao polarities, feminine and masculine, intuition and logic, heart and mind. All the laws of physics belong to the white yang. It is the objective aspect of nature, the exterior of existence, the surface. While dark yin is the subjective aspect of nature, the inner of existence, the depths. A physicist sees only young, light, energy and matter, while master of Tao, in addition to patterns and formulas, observes what is hidden in the darkness, something indescribable and paradoxical. The mind cannot comprehend what lies beyond it. There are phenomena that cannot be described with words and symbols. Something always hidden between the lines. Academics believe that everything can be put into formulas, concepts and laws. And therefore, their mind acts as a filter for everything that doesn't fit into this belief. Such a person is unable to understand the master of Tao, who says that the fundamental force of nature is harmony. The academic cannot see beyond the veil of the second law of thermodynamics, according to which entropy, which is chaos, is always increasing. But the master observes that nature has not only the forces of entropy, but also the forces of anti-anthropy, such as life, creativity, consciousness, compassion, and love. This phenomena goes beyond physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. 
They do not obey the laws of cause and effect that limits colors' minds. Existence began without a cause. Love follows no logic. Life is unpredictable. Consciousness has no boundaries. Truth is indescribable and paradoxical. Master sees that reality is irrational at its core, with bits of logic on the surface. Those who look at the world through the prism of the logical mind see the world as a mechanism. When one remains unaware of what lies beyond one's mind, they unconsciously begin to destroy everything alive and magical about the world, so it would be compatible with the image in the mind and would not trigger internal conflict. By trying to conceptualize experiences of life, beauty, soul or love, people unconsciously destroy them. Masters know the art of transcending the mind and thus able to observe that nature is not a soulless mechanism, it is alive and conscious. Life in the universe is not a random anomaly, it takes its origin even before the Big Bang and the formation of planets. Many believe that life is a random event, but no, life is in very heart of existence. Its heartbeat can be called Tao. It contracts and relaxes, creating a cycle of birth and death, of space and time. It unites all living beings in this endless moment that we call here and now. Tao is not an intellectual teaching, religion or philosophy. It is not a model of thinking or belief. Tao does not have answers to any questions, doesn't preach about bad and good, and doesn't tell where to go or what to do. Tao is a pathless path where all meaning lies in the way itself, just as the meaning of life is to live. Our sensitivity and awareness of the present is a compass of Tao. This compass doesn't point north, its single arrow always points inward, because the destination in space and time is always the same, here and now. Life, harmony, beauty, creativity, joy and love cannot be found outside. They are within ourselves. All the wonders of life already present in the very moment. It is only a question of becoming aware of it. Tao is not a point on a map to be found. It is an endless way on which one continuously walks. There is nothing to learn but something to experience constantly. Imagine a skillful acrobat easily walking on a rope. Acrobats never remain motionless. Every moment they are tuning themselves according to an inner sense of balance. Balance is not a static thing. The center shifts with each moment. If a rope walker tried to forcefully freeze at some point in the middle, they would immediately fall. Balance is not a theory to think about. It must be felt, and only then followed. That is why it is impossible to have a philosophy that explains life and its harmony. Tao requires awareness, openness and sensitivity. It is something that is understood not by the mind, but by the God, like the art of walking on a rope. Tao Te Ching teaches nothing. It is an invitation letter 
for a TV is the universe. It calls us to look inside ourselves, discard everything we know about life, and simply be. Here is what Lao Tzu says in the third passage. If powerful people are given too much importance, common folk becomes helpless and weak. When the value of things exaggerated, people desire more than they truly need. If knowledge is glorified, while not knowing is condemned, ignorant snobs dominate the realm of wisdom. When one can be better or worse than another, reasons for dishonesty and malice exist. Ideals are like disease. They cloud the mind and darken the spirit. People following the voice of another become deaf to the whisper of their own heart. Thus, silence is the master of all wise, who lead by liberating hearts and straightening bones. A master softens ambitions and keeps people naturally simple, protecting them from the grasp of greed and cunning plots. True compassion involves freeing people from established beliefs by emptying people's minds master leaves no footprints behind wise follow nature where great is hidden in small true peace cannot be achieved by force through away the art of effortless action, everything unfolds rightly, on its own accord. Everyone has a unique inner voice, individuality, know to beings I like, and therefore there cannot be correct philosophy, ideology, law or religion in the world. When a group of people begins to follow a fabricated ideal, their society becomes a destructive machine that suppresses the inner voice and natural freedom of humanity. Faced with the uniqueness of the individual, society begins to force people to its image, as if there are gears that might be polished to fit. Destructive society always impose a certain image on the world, instead of constantly adapting itself to ever-changing reality. In such world, free creative intelligence slowly decays and becomes a rotten socially accepted mind. A truly alive individual is often perceived as an antisocial rebel simply because they value authenticity and freedom. Such a person sees that every life is unique and incomparable, so instead of following the voices of others, everyone should follow their inner voice of heart. Masters are not leaders, they are free living human beings, a master to themselves. They follow no one and do not seek to control others. Masters know that the inner voice is not just the voice of individuality. It is the voice of the universe itself. Thus, in knowing own life, one also knows the life of a whole world, because they are not two, but one. All masters know that by simply becoming aware of their true nature, people would return to harmony. 
The world doesn't need organized religions, political parties, or imposed programs of education, morality, values, and culture. Everyone is capable of figuring out for themselves what is right, where to go, and what to do. Humans are not sheep that need a shepherd to control their minds, but primates that lack awareness. And how can anyone say what is good for another when they don't even know what is truly good for themselves? Everyone is unique with their own peculiarities and needs. There is no point in following someone else's path. Masters do not teach anything. They point a finger at what people have lost. Their integrity, freedom, contentment, life. If powerful people are given too much importance, common folk becomes helpless and weak. When the value of things is exaggerated, people desire more than they truly need. Any system of power inherently wants to control others. Thus, it has to suppress people's freedom. It doesn't matter what form the system takes, be it politics or family, religion or school, corporation or media. Any power structure has an interest in preventing people from being their authentic selves. A person whose heart's voice is suppressed becomes easily influenced and manipulated. All systems try to suppress free individuality so that people could be formed into the obedient crowd. The human mind is constantly haunted by parasites that hide behind many masks. They hide in advertisements, convincing people that life is meaningless without their products. They masquerade as politicians, promising a better future in exchange for compliance and taxes. They disguise themselves as saints, offering salvation from the sins they invented. Or through the hypocritic smiles of corporate managers, who acquire money and power at the expense of the work done by others. Those parasites exploit shame, fear, and people's insecurities. They invent unrealistic ideals that infuse the world with inferiority and envy. They divide people into castes and groups, creating competition. Parasites thrive in the places where compassion and love are lacking. They act cunningly by growing roots in the subconscious mind, thus reinforcing their power and making people more and more dependent, helpless. By gaining more power, they turn society into a system with living cogs that serves only the chosen. There, people are treated like replaceable resources, then function solely to keep the system running. Parasites know well that one must divide people before they could be ruled. But wise also know that all conflicts take root in the division. Thus, they always seek unity. The world is not a system or a device to manipulate, but something alive, aware and breathing. Each organism living its own life supports the life of the entire planet, just as cells and microorganisms support life in the human body. Masters of Tao do not seek power to control others. They are driven by nature's beauty and deep admiration of life. When technologies follow Tao, they harmoniously merge with nature and serve all living beings. Those who are aware of how everything is interconnected 
and in a delicate balance, have no desire for exploitation or suppression. Individuality means more than efficiency. Beauty and fulfillment are much more valuable than achievements and power. Truly living people do not rush through life. They see depths and meaning in each moment. Knowing that there is nothing more important in life than the world within oneself and beyond the window. If knowledge is glorified while not knowing is condemned, ignorance knobs dominate the realm of wisdom. When one can be better or worse than another, reasons for dishonesty and malice exist. A wise teacher helps students to understand their intrinsic nature and to unlock the potential that already lies within. The talent merely needs to be awakened. Wise teachers won't compare a student to others. They don't care about diplomas or exam results. They understand that each individual is unique. Therefore, it's impossible to have a prearranged pass for anyone. True education is creative. It encourages experimentation, values fresh ideas, and fosters self-reflection. True education nurtures curiosity rather than provides ready answers to questions that students didn't even think to ask. It opens doors for exciting mysteries and teaches the value of cooperation. Creative learning embraces mistakes rather than punishes, for mistakes are valuable lessons. The teacher learns from the student, just as the student learns from the teacher. Destructive education fosters habitual repetition, memorizing facts without understanding, and what for? To merely conform to social traditions and standards? Such education is turning people into either efficient parrots or inefficient robots. The destructive teacher tries to feed the student into a broken society, like a brick into a wall, rather than helping to find and unfold the inner potential. Thus, instead of learning, the student's mind either conforms to mediocrity or looks for ways to bypass the established system. In such a society, people are bound to get only more dull. Those few not corrupted by the system live in isolation or in constant hardship. The originally open, curious and flexible mind is slowly dying. There is no spark in people's eyes. Enthusiasm is replaced by anxiety and boredom. When society reduces people to numbers for the sake of comparison, the richness of human hearts is suppressed and life becomes impoverished. The system turns the colorful living world into a gray concrete garden full of plastic flowers surrounded by a wire fence, where life is perceived as a prison sentence to endure rather than a miracle to celebrate. Hence, it is essential to realize that in the universe, everything has a unique path. If people could simply accept themselves and be true to who they are in their heart, the world would be filled with joy and love. After all, we are all one. And everyone carries within the potential of the universe, the force that ignited the first star. To see it, one needs to cast aside all ideologies and beliefs, and then turn one's awareness inward. Ideals are like a disease. They cloud the mind and darken the spirit. People 
following the voice of another, become deaf to the whisper of their own heart. Thus, silence is the master of all wise, who lead by liberating hearts and straightening bones. A master softens ambitions and keeps people naturally simple, protecting them from the grasp of greed and cunning plots. People are reflection of their environments. Take the gardeners. They look for favorable conditions to grow their plants. Water, nutrients and sunlight need to be in balance for the potential hidden within a seed to unfold. A gardener gives the seed freedom, focusing instead on the health of the soil. Life in the seed requires neither stern lectures nor application of force. It already knows how to manifest itself into a tree or flower, how to bloom, offering the world its fragrance and fruits. The work of a master is similar to the art of a gardener. Master knows that the peach tree cannot be turned into an apple tree, just as person's life cannot be turned into something it is not. Thus, Master can only assist in discovering that potential already exists within, can help to create an environment in which the spirit would grow strong. The Master's work is to get rid of conditioning in people's mind, so that they can become aware of the voice of life hidden inside. When a person lives truthfully to one's heart, the work of a Master is done. From birth, people are sculpted into determined shapes of their nationality, religion, culture. Hence, individuality gets replaced by artificial persona devoid of life. Such people are still functioning and can exist for a long time, but they experience only a few moments of wonder, while life offers such moments non-stop. Culture acts as an anvil for the human heart. But life is not a metal. It cannot be shaped with a heavy hammer. Luckily, the inner voice never dies. Society can corrupt only the mind, but it cannot touch the heart. Destructive power of all conditionings in the mind can be removed if person becomes aware of their existence. When the mind is free from the lies and the heart is open again, the barriers of the river of life disappear and sacred waters immediately return to the valley of being that begins to blossom like a desert after rain, full of vibrant colors and playful energy. It is not accidental that Lao Tzu has chosen the world Tao to describe the essence of life. Tao means a flow of a river. Like water, life nourishes everything. However, unlike a real river, the river of life cannot run dry. Its waters are always clean. To drown in it doesn't mean to die. It means to become fulfilled. Tao is not a philosophy about life. It is life itself. To understand Tao, it's enough to simply be present, to be aware, to become all-accepting space through which life stream allowed to move freely. True compassion involves freeing people from established beliefs. By emptying people's minds, master leave, no footprints behind. The master's task is not to add new clutter to the mind, but to help in emptying it. 
the mind is useful for practical purposes, like driving a vehicle or ordering pizza, but not for understanding life. The mind is created by the external world, yet there is something inside every being that can't be accessed from the outside, an inner realm. To find it, one must look inward. It is a path that can only be walked alone. No other soul can enter the inner world except the one it belongs to. Through inner journey, people realize who they are and liberate themselves from the mental chains their minds are full of. The master's work is to persuade people to take the first step, then inspire them to go on till the end is reached. Masters are not teachers, so their methods might seem unusual. Walk alone in the forest, sit quietly in the darkness, hold a tea ceremony, listen to music, stretch the body or dance on the wet sand, the master's goal is not to give knowledge, but to immerse the individual in a state where they discover the truth themselves. It happens either in the moment of relaxation or through catharsis, when one drops control and allows everything to flow. In such state, something that was once hidden behind a veil of thoughts becomes clear, and in a voice of truth, finally breaks free. Dogmas, ideals and prejudices all act as obstacles in the pursuit of truth. The masters are not philosophers or saints. They do not call for others to follow, but rather say, know yourself, free yourself. The mind is like a computer with an operating system that society constantly programs. To grasp the truth, one must deprogram the system. Masters inspire to disassemble everything that one has internalized, restoring original innocence, authenticity, and clarity of mind. It is a very subtle work to clean the mind from accumulated garbage, leaving no trace behind, not even trace of the master. It is better to think that Tao Te Ching is a work of anti-philosophy and anti-religion. It is a tool that, once fully used, must be cast aside. No one carries a mop around after the house has been cleaned. Tao philosophy exists solely to free the mind from all contemplations about life, without exceptions. Lao Tzu warns against believing and following any idea, including Tao. As one of the wisest awakened masters, Lao Tzu doesn't preach about good and bad and doesn't tell people what they should do. He suggests that we ourselves discover the wellspring of wisdom and unity with the world. Wise follow nature, where great is hidden in small. True peace cannot be achieved by force. Throw away the art of effortless action. Everything unfolds rightly on its own accord. The practice of realizing Tao was named Wei. This Chinese term can be translated as not doing, not forcing, or effortlessness. However, it's important not to interpret this literally. Wu Wei doesn't mean being lazy, abstaining from all actions, or doing nothing. Wu Wei symbolizes the action that occurs spontaneously, without planning. It's akin to how a dewdrop falls from a blade of grass, how a person, upon seeing a snake, 
instinctively jumps back without a second thought. However, it's not an automatic reaction either. Wu Wei is an action that arises from the present moment, not from thought or habit, but when a person is fully aware and in tune with oneself and the world. To grasp the essence of Wu Wei, consider the experience of artists immersed in a creative process. Picture a painter who, while trying to capture the emotional essence of a sunset on canvas, doesn't think about the mechanics of the painting process. The hand and brush intuitively mix colors and create shapes, with the painter simply witnessing the image unfold as if by itself. Similarly, the dancer's body instinctively produces movements as the music flows into the ears. There is no room for thought. One can only surrender to the flow of the moment. Any intrusion of thought or self-doubt disconnects the artist from the immediacy, thereby impacting the art and making creative process less fulfilling. Ask artists how they create, and most will admit that they don't know. Through opening their hearts, they connect to the moment and become a channel for the universe to express itself. Yet, the way is not just a practice for creators or wise. It is a way to reach the ultimate experience of living. When two then trained samurai engage in combat, they turn into perfect mirrors to each other. Their minds are free from even a thought of death. In this state, when one samurai strikes, the other responds instantaneously. Should even a fleeting thought disturb the samurai in combat, it would lead to the immediate death. They remain deeply immersed in this moment, mirroring each other as effortlessly as a lake reflects kiss flying above, without hesitation, without question. Then warriors do not fight, but observe how swords and bodies move as if on its own. Through non-action, they remain alive. People let the mind to guide them through their lives, forgetting about something much deeper and all-encompassing inside. In fact, the mind is just a substitution, while thoughtless awareness is absent. You don't think about how to ride a bike once you've mastered it. You are aware of your riding, but you don't think about every action that comes with the process. You don't think about your muscles, tissues, the nervous system sending signals, the mechanics of the bicycles, or the law of aerodynamics and friction. The writing happens on its own. You are simply aware of it, and your awareness sets the direction and pace for the ride. Those who must move away live easily without overthinking, as if they were riding a bike. To get into the art of effortless action, one first needs to master the mind through thoughtless awareness of the present moment. One can start by observing the breath without trying to control it, or by watching burning of a candle flame Object doesn't matter. The goal is to witness the moment happening. For people who find themselves restless and unable to relax, it is good to begin with setting free an excess of energy through dancing, jumping, or any other activity. The important bit here is to stay conscious of the moment. For example, when running, 
one may note a sensation of speed, the blur of trees passing by, the rapping beating of the heart, the core of Wu Wei is deep awareness, and with that, any action can turn into practice. Nature is a true master of Wu Wei. Imagine water, its effortless flow. Once in a cup, water perfectly adapts to the shape of the vessel. Add some soap, and nature instantly finds the most efficient form for a bubble. A form that offers the greatest resistance to external forces while maintaining the least internal pressure. To calculate the shape of a single bubble, the human mind would require years of work, complex mathematics, supercomputers, and vast amounts of energy to perform the calculations. Yet, the result is not compatible to what nature achieves instantly and effortlessly. The strengths, wisdom, and capabilities of Tao are unfathomable to the human mind. After all, humans are but a small part of nature. Yet by being a part of nature, we can learn its ways. The deeper goes the practice of the way, the deeper one connects with the source of life. Such clear state of mind has no borders between the external and internal, no division on subject, object, and action. It is a state where all concept has been transcended in one flow of the universe. Observe the life alone, and there will be no moment that repeats itself. Therefore, life cannot be navigated by rules, or prearranged actions. No plants or formulas can fully encompass reality. Thus it's crucial to free the mind from all preconceived answers, strategies, expectations and beliefs that may clutter one's awareness and prevent spontaneous act. All thinking originates from memory, which is a register of past events, moments that have come and will never recur. Which berries can be eaten? When do you cross the road? The mind is good at picking up those patterns that save your life. But life itself is not a pattern. Pattern implies repetition, but life changes from moment to moment. Only a person whose perception is firmly grounded in the present can truly be considered alive. Masters use the mind as a tool, like they use a knife. But once the cutting is done, the knife must be put aside to enjoy the taste of cooking. A person who doesn't know the silence of thoughtlessness is similar to a person who uses a knife all the time, even in the bedroom with a lover. Akin to maniacs, they don't have peace inside and the same feeling of something rotten constantly haunts their lives. But a person whose awareness is grounded in the present moment constantly rejuvenates with it, maintaining the freshness, well-being and sharpness of the mind. As the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, no human ever steps in the same river twice for it's not the same river, and they are not the same human. Lao Tzu takes it further, saying, nobody can step into the same river, even once. Everything changes more rapidly than the mind can conceive. The concept of the river and the concept of the human become stale the same moment they appear. Before we were able to utter the world life, the river of life has already changed. The universe is not a static set in stone thing, but a constantly changing flux. Nature, in its immense richness and diversity, has not created two identical sunsets over billions of years. 
know to be inside like. There is no point in understanding life and trying to figure it out. It is impossible. Life must be lived and experienced moment by moment. That the whole understanding of life. That is the teaching of Tao. It is said that when the world is ready for a new revelation, it manifests everywhere. Lao Tzu lived in China about two and a half thousand years ago. At the same time, in India, there was a prince named Gautama. Living a life of luxury and carefree is, the prince nevertheless faced the inevitability of death. He learned of the sufferings beyond the palace walls where he lived for 29 years. Rejecting his royal status, he left the palace to become an ascetic in search of truth. After several years, Gautama found enlightenment, and now he is known throughout the world as the Buddha, an awakened one. The cosmic order that Lao Tzu called Tao Buddha referred to as Dharma, meaning the true nature of existence. The practice to comprehend Dharma he named Dhyana, which is commonly translated as meditation or awareness. The stories of Buddha and Lao Tzu are intricately intertwined, even though they lived in different countries, spoke different languages, and never heard of each other. Despite their different journeys, Lao Tzu in China and Buddha in India arrived to the same realization, each examining the same phenomena from different sides. After a thousand years, in the 5th century, the streams of Tao and Dharma finally converged into one river through Master Bodhidharma, who by coincidence was also an Indian prince that rejected his royal status in pursuit of the truth. After his enlightenment, he was sent by his master from India to China to bring people a real experience of awakening. During this period, China had become obsessed with the theoretical aspects of Buddhism and Taoism, losing touch with original truth. But Hidharma brought to China his realization and the practice of Dhyana, known in China as Chan. Finding that nobody was ready to understand the truth behind those teachings, but Hidharma spent nine years meditating in a cave and rejecting anyone who wanted to become his disciple. Eventually, he settled in the Shaolin monastery with monks who study Taoism and Buddhism. There, when Hidharma transcended the teachings of Lao Tzu and Buddha, forming a unified whole. He also founded a unique meditation practice for the Shaolin monks. Observing their physical weakness from prolonged passive meditation, he merged meditation with physical exercises, creating a method aimed at both spiritual and physical awakening. Thus, Shaolin became the birthplace of Kung Fu, which means a skill perfected through immense time and effort. Martial arts were just a minor aspect of what was happening in Shaolin back then. But Hidharma marked the beginning of a golden era of enlightenment that continued for several centuries. The influence of Tao and Chang spread to all aspects of life, from daily tasks like drinking tea and chopping wood, to the refined arts and swordsmanship. When Chang has reached Japan, it became known as Dan, and it is during this time the work of Bodhidharma, Buddha and Lao Tzu reached its culmination. Bodhidharma described the core principle of Zen in four lines. 
a special transmission outside any doctrine or method, not founded in words and scriptures, directly pointing at the human consciousness one sees through nature and becomes a Buddha. The essence of that lies in transforming a reaction into meditation. It represents the fusion of the spiritual and the material, the worldly and the divine, the full transcendence of yin and yang, where sky and earth unite. Zen has fanned the flame of awakening into a wildfire and ignited a new kind of revolution, a rebellion of individuality. Then fundamentally rejects the idea that one must adhere to any ideology or method. It rejects all doctrines and beliefs. Then laughs at the notion that becoming a monk and renouncing the world are prerequisites for enlightenment. It states that enlightenment is available to everyone, simply because everyone is already united with the universe in their hearts. Thus, Buddha is not a specific person or a role model to imitate, but someone who fully realizes and actualizes themselves moment by moment consciously living in everyday life, truthful to one's nature of the heart. Hence, it is not a coincidence that every awakened master in any century teaches the same. Be a light unto yourself. Don't follow anybody. Truth cannot be borrowed. It must be found within. No one can take another's place in existence. There is no need to imitate or conform to someone else's expectations. In every individual, life expresses itself in the most unique way. It is its gift and beauty. Such is the way of Tao. Such is the fire of Ten. Enlightenment is simply a freedom from the mind, and it is available to anyone. To find it, one need not take any action. Life orchestrates everything on its own. It merely requires one not to interfere. This is the meaning of meditation, of Wu Wei. To stop being an obstacle on the path. Simply be open to existence and trust the flow. The tree of life has already planted its seed within each of us. Each time we connect with the present, the seed receives its nourishment. Awareness is the light, love is the water, meditation is a treatment for the soil. Once it is mature and strong, it begins to blossom with creativity, joy, beauty and love. And this blossoming has no limits. It can transcend space and time, reaching far beyond boundaries of the universe. The Zen poet Basho wrote a beautiful illustration of meditation. Sitting quietly, doing nothing, spring comes and the grass grows by itself. On the path of enlightenment, there's no need to do anything. Simply be silent and watch. Witness how spring arrives, how the grass grows, how leaves rustle in the wind. Be aware of the coolness of water, the aroma of tea, and the flavor of food. At night, watch the moon and its reflection on the lake. By day, watch the play of lights and shadows. Watch how anger and kindness come and go, how hunger and fullness replace each other. Embrace everything, both comfort and discomfort, 
movement and stillness. Lose yourself completely in one infinite moment called life. Let go of everything, even the effort to let go. Don't hurry. There is nowhere to go and nothing to achieve, except the unimaginable depths this moment has. The deeper one's awareness goes, the closer is one to Buddhahood. Here is the Zen story that may guide you on the way. Master Rinzai lived in a Japanese tent temple. One early morning, before dawn had even broken, a young man approached the temple. He sat down nearby in a lotus posture, closed his eyes, and immersed himself in meditation. He wished to become a disciple of the master, and thus sought to demonstrate his discipline and serious intention. Master Rinzai watched him attentively for six hours, during which the young man remained utterly motionless and never opened his eyes. Feeling compassion for the young disciple, Rinzai approached him and with the knuckles of his fingers struck the head of the disciple, saying, Get up and go away. This temple has enough statues. The young man accepted rejection without arguing and started to walk away. However, the master invited him back and added, Be alive, don't overexert yourself and never imitate others. <laughs>